Hello, and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Martha Booker Johnson, and I am the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation, or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. Today's speakers are Martin Mouse and Christian Rappold. Martin is a professor of African linguistics at Leiden University. His research focuses on the description of Cushitic languages, including Iraku and Alagua, as well as the exploration of language and identity, valency changing verbal derivations, and the languages of East and West Africa. Christian is a postdoc on the Unraveling East Africa's Early Linguistic History Project. He previously worked on Khoi Khoi as a postdoc on Bench for his PhD and Lingala for his MA. Please join me in welcoming Martin and Christian as they give their talk, Cushitic Nilotic Contacts, Tanzanian Cushitic and Kalenjin. Yes, thank you. So um, what, what we do in this talk is we, uh, we started off, uh, this is uh, representing work that Christian and I have been doing now for, uh, for a number of months. Um, we started with uh, looking at an article by Bernd Hein uh, uh, from Scotland and uh, Rainer Fossen from 1979, uh, where they postulated a now extinct uh, Cushitic language, proto Baz. And uh, that language was uh, set up on the basis of East Cushitic borrowings in South Nilotic. To them, this is a, a separate branch in uh, East Omotana, and it constitutes the third major southward movement of Omotana speakers from the highlands of Ethiopia next to West and East Omotana. It is uh, cited uh, not only by linguists, but also understandably by archaeologists and geneticists. Um, it hasn't been really discussed in the Cushitic literature, um, and some Cushitic overviews uh, don't mention this as one of the Cushitic languages. So this is one thing we want to do is to say, okay, um, does this hold? And there has been, of course, more data collection after since 97, uh, 1979, but also 1979, this was the time when Van Hein had just finished his reconstruction of Proto-East Omatana, was Proto-Sam. Uh, Rainer Fossil was working on the reconstruction of Eastern Nilotic, and Franz Rotland was in the middle of working on his reconstruction of uh, South Nilotic that appeared uh, three years later. And, and that has some differences with the, with the um, proposals in this article. So the graph here shows that they see proto as a separate branch of Omotana. Omotana is one of the branches in East Cushitic. Is it a separate language? Well, uh, what we will argue here that there's actually not enough evidence to propose that the lang that that these borrowings come from a separate language. Hmm. Uh, and to or to argue for this, um, uh, Hein et al. They uh, they mention a number of adaptations. Uh, number one, all obstruents are interpreted as voiceless, in line with the absence of voice obstruents in Proto-South Nilotic. So these are adapta loan adaptations of the borrowings of Cushitic into into uh, South Nilotic. Ranges are deleted or replaced as they do not exist in Proto-Southern Nilotic. Long uh, consonants are shortened. There are no geminates in proto southern nilotic, and and we find all of these convincing. But they have an adaptation of the voiced pharyngeal ein, and that is adapted as s. This last one we don't find convincing because it's um, a, a quite quite a big distance between a and s, uh, both uh, in in perception and in production. So these are the adaptations that they propose. Um, uh, but then uh, what are the, the sound rules that make proto uh, separate from the rest of Omotana? Those are a split of the Proto-East Omotana R into two rotics, uh, one uh, in proto which is the same, and the other one, which they represent with an abstract symbol, with uh, small cap. 
Um, the second one is the centralization of the pre, uh, uh, proto East Omotana A to proto Bas A e or A e in the context of pharyngeal consonants. We start with the second one. We don't we don't uh, see that as a possible as a valuable uh, sound change um, to to warrant a different um, branch of East Omotana because the Cushitic languages that have these uh, these pharyngeals, they have um, uh, they have a phonetic uh, allophone of the vowels as being centralized in the context of these pharyngeal consonants. So in our, our view, what the Nilotic speakers did by, uh, by using an A or an A where we have phonologically an A in, in the Cushitic source, but phonetically an A, they didn't adapt anything at all. So it's not a sound change to us. Uh, the, and then the first one, the split of the R, doesn't hold to us either. Well, even in, in their um, um, article, it's, it's not so convincing. They uh, propose this split for the, of the, the R to the, the R to the R, is to us not problematic, although some of the uh, evidence that they give for this is maybe not convincing, but we found enough additional evidence to assume that that is indeed the case. But uh, with, the, with the other R, um, the correspondence is based on two cognate sets. Um, one of the words for the calf, but for that word, they say in his footnote themselves that that is actually wider attested than, uh, than uh, Southern Nilotic and, and wider into Eastern Sudanic. So it is likely to be inherited from Eastern U uh, Sudanic in, in Southern Nilotic. Um, and then that, that word for the calf and the word for the male bovine, ar, that is linked in, in their proposal, not to East Omotana languages, but only to Erbore and Dasanech, which are West Omotana language. So uh, if, we do, uh, if you would allow for a possibility that, it, that there is not a, a single source, as we will do, then we, were, we will be happy with that uh, uh, item for the male bovine R to be uh, transferred from West Omotana. And we would not have evidence for a separate uh, proto bas language. Well, uh, when we go through the interpretation of the evidence that they present are a, a, a number of challenges, uh, we'll go through them very, very quickly. Here they are uh, mentioned. We go through them one by one. Uh, sometimes it's difficult. It's, of course, difficult to choose um, where which is the the Cushitic source the word for rain rope a reconstructed proto east Cushitic as rain this ambiguity in whether this is from um, proto east Omotana where it is indeed the rope for Somali and um, uh, but but the, the forms for the Oromoid uh, languages are actually the same. When you see a voiceless uh, labial there, rope, that is actually phonetically voiced in Konzo. Similar um, a story for the uh, for the other item here. So it it could be Isomatana, but it doesn't Im immediately follow from the from the data. Uh, the direction of the transfer, the um, high net all they don't discuss that. Uh, a lot, not at all actually, the direction of transfer. So a word like buri for red is within Cushitic limited to West Omotana. So um, it is equally possible to suggest uh, a transfer from Southern Nilotic to uh, West Omotana. In a similar case for the, the word to understand in, uh, in protocol engine. Hmm. But um, uh, East Omotana has uh, is indeed a very similar word, but it is uh, restricted uh, within Cushitic to East Omotana. Could be the other way around. And difficult to say because also uh, within Nilo-Saharan, so far as 
as we can see the evidence, it's, it's also restricted to Kalenjin. <clears throat> Reconstruction not confirmed, what we mean, okay, um, they, they present here uh, proto-South uh, Nilotic or, or proto-Kalenjin uh, in the article in 79, but then in Rotland, 82, uh, that reconstruction for proto-Kalenjin or proto nilotic has not survived. And it cannot be confirmed. And sometimes Eric, because we will also refer to Eric who did the reconstruction of proto uh, south nilotic and um, in the article they refer to that work by Eret in, in, mostly in footnotes but we have taken the evidence that that Eret has uh, produced also into account so Eret has for proto kalenji makal for the male sheep uh, but he doesn't in his uh, dissertation he doesn't provide any motivations for his reconstruction so it is indeed, it uh, exists in Pokot. And um, yeah, thanks to Bonnie, we now have the sources. Uh, recently, we got the sources that Herod used, the notes that he used for his reconstruction. And there we can see that the two other varieties where he has a root macal for the, for the male sheep. But these are, uh, yeah, uh, Pokot varieties, in fact. So. It is uh, not clear that we can indeed reconstruct such a word at proto kalenjin level. Is the target language South Nilotic? And then the challenge that we have here is uh, that very often it's uh, um, the South Nilotic uh, reconstructed form is given as proto kalenjin Sometimes it's only given as Datoga. And then when there is a, a cockpit between um, let's say East Omotana and, and Datoga, then uh, we have a challenge. So, so an example is the, the root nook to suck can only be linked, linked to Datoga. We don't find any evidence for this root in Kalenjin. So either there is a transfer from Cushitic into Datoga, which is a challenge. Um, uh, geographically, because that is, that is actually, we don't see a contact scenario possible at, at the moment between the Toga and, uh, and East Omotana. Um, or it was transferred into proto South Nilotic and subsequently just lost in uh, Palenjin. Uh, there's a challenge then. Sometimes it is quite uh, far apart, and this is, for example, the case, as we mentioned, with the voiced pharyngeal um, that they um, assume to be cognate with the S. Uh, some of those, uh, when they occur, uh, where finally we are still looking for options that maybe Kalenjin added a suffix S and then subsequently lost the pharyngeal or lost the French anyway. Um, but in this case, it is an initial uh, pharyngeal that, that would should correspond to S, uh, which, which we find to, uh, too far away uh, from our logic phonetically. So sometimes uh, the reconstruction, um, we can't really confirm that for the zeek, for the mud and dung, Mutt and dung together as an etymon uh, is, is not so strange for Cushitic, but uh, we don't have uh, the, the evidence in, in the uh, reconstructed, uh, in the reconstruction, earlier reconstruction by Heine, his, his book on uh, a proto East Omotana reconstruction. And Lamberti has a different uh, reconstruction. Tani is difficult to reconstruct for East Omotana because we have it only for Somali. But further on, we will su suggest that that is something in the other direction. Let me check. Did you say that Casno is only to Stomotana, but not elsewhere? Kushitic? If yes, then this is not true because we also find Cas to know in Highland East Kushitic. Thank you, Yvonne. So we have to reconsider that. Uh, there's one of those items uh, that is not discussed at all, and we uh, we have in the article. It's so we have not discussed it either. 
but let's now go uh, to uh, a discussion of the cognitives that we support uh, and often with additional evidence using us, our reconstructions and, and the later reconstructions. And, and then discuss, well, not all of them, there are too many, but we will uh, go from the collection of by source. So um, East Omotana, but maybe higher up Omotana, is a remarkable set of numbers that is uh, clearly uh, transferred into what we will claim proto-South Nilotic. So you find them for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but also for all the decimals, 30, 40, 50, 60. We don't mention 70 and 90 here, but probably as well, 80 and 100. Um, uh, the, uh, we will, uh, uh, we will discuss one of them, well, two of them. First, the item 430, and then indicate, explain why it is proto-Calangian or proto southern -Alotic. Uh Let's go there. So, SOSOM 30, proto calangian SOSOM, um, and then uh, proto east Omotana SOSOM. Um, when we discuss in the, the article that we are preparing, when we uh, discuss all these items, we first give the line as it is, as it is given in the Protobas article, and then we give any, any uh, additions to these reconstructions. So in his uh, 92 book, Rotland is protocol engine, slightly different as Sassam, and it is not... Uh, doesn't appear in the reconstruction by Heine in 78. By the way, we use uh, uh, proto east Omotana as the label for what Heine called proto sum. Hmm. So the, the east Omotana form is a contraction of Siza for three and Toman for 10. Um, this is a contraction of order in which the modifier precedes the head. And this is common in, it's also the way uh, these decimals are formed in central Cushitic and uh, Highland East Cushitic. Uh, although the new for the new syntax of the, the innovation in syntax of Cushitic is to move to head modifier order. So a number of those languages they have innovated, they don't use these con contracted forms of the, of the digit plus the number, the word for 10. Uh, but uh, whenever, and Rendil is an example of one of, uh, that of a language that has a new construction, tense, free, in, for 30 rather than a contraction of 10 plus 10, then the order is always head modifier. Um, so uh, because uh, quite a number of the lowland East Cushitic languages have innovated these, these numerals into a transparent construction where the order is head modifier, it is a bit difficult to see at what exact level the uh, transfer has gone to uh, proto-South Nilotic. Uh, um, proto-South Nilotic of proto engine that will be in the next slide. So in the in Kalenjin, a remark, we have unexplained vowel length uh, here and there. And um, the Kalenjin must have borrowed the numeral quite the num number from quite early, because within East Omotana there are these rules of um, Z na D for Somali and M na N for Somali. And that is not affected in Sosom or Sasam. Um, the numeral can be reconstructed in our view to proto nilotic level, although um, uh, we, we showed this only for proto calangian That is because Datoga, so the other branch of proto nilotic you have common Datoga and you have proto calangian In Datoga, those uh, numerals like 30, 50, 70, they are formed uh, on the basis of 20 of a multiple of 20 plus 10. Um, our suggestion is that this is a, a Datoga innovation, 
and that these forms existed in Proto-South Nilotic, but have been lost subsequently in Datoga. And we do this to, uh, to account for the whole uh, list of, uh, of all these uh, numerals uh, going in one um, transfer, one context scenario to, in that case, to Proto-South Nilotic. East uh, Omotana or Omotana, it's, it is difficult. If it is only East, it, it has to be early, very early in East Omotana because of these changes uh, from Z to D that, that, that can't have happened. But that must have, the transform must have happened before those. Um, but it could, for I think for many of them, it could just as well be Omotana level, Proto-Omotana. And, and that has been kept in mind when we think of possible scenarios of which kind of groups can have been in contact with each other. Just one other one of the of the numbers, the word for uh, for nine, a uh, proto isomotana sagal, and uh, in proto kanjin sagal. Um, there's a challenge to uh, to bring that up to uh, the proto south nilotic because common datoga has sagesh and that is uh, not corresponding regularly to sakal and that's why Hotland has not reconstructed it up to proto south nilotic level um it's uh, uh, Black has uh, reconstructed this for Lowland East Cushit as a sagal before a consonant and sakal before a vowel. Um, it is uh, restricted to Lowland East Cushitic within Cushitic. Yeah, I keep uh, making these claims and hoping that somebody will say, no, no, it's also there because uh, this is a way we can get more information. But we found it only there. And um, the East and West Nilotic branches of Nilus Saharan, they, um, they have a construction five, on them, on, they have a construction for nine as five plus four. Blajek, he has an extensive uh, discussion of numbers in, in Cushitic. And in his view, the East Nilotic ones, uh, numerals, were there's not nine, but other ones uh, were not transmitted via South Nilotic, but via Southeast Cernic. Just to uh, to acknowledge that. So uh, the is is this now from for for nine from uh, transfer to protocol engine, and uh, is this how? Or can we can we find a scenario in, in which the transfer is to proto nilotic as with the other numbers? Um, if if the so the two different if there are two different transfers uh, from that is one option from uh, Cushitic to proto kalenjin and to uh, common datoga. Then, uh, so from um, Sakal to Sakal and from Sakal to uh, Shagesh, then uh, that is difficult uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, then we could, sorry, let me restart. From Sakal to Sakal and from a Cushitic source to Shagesh, there's no Cushitic uh, source that we can uh, point out uh, that has a shear in this route. And there's also no evidence for direct East Kushita contact with that toga. Maybe we could say uh, the shear in that toga is, uh, is a paradigmatic leveling, uh, but none in the, in, the, in the paradigm of numbers, but there's no other number in that toga that starts with shear. What could be possible is that the final shear influenced the initial S to become shear as an instance of palatal harmony. Uh, that final S in, 
in that toga could come from uh, should come from the proto south nilotic uh, abstract l and also that's also true for proto kalenjin um oh i missed something here this uh, they could both come from proto nilotic uh, abstract l but that happens then in Dimandas reconstruction, when that L is followed by an E. L, L, and then you get L, and that L can go to SH. But we have no evidence for final E in Iskushidik. Proto Westrift has final E, but they have as root for nine Gualeli. Is that uh, related to, to Sagel? Well, uh, we we have below here a very uh, wild scenario that that could be the case, and um, and that's all we can say in in our attempt to bring together proto Kalenjin and uh, common Datoga to rescue uh, the scenario that the transference was to proto South Nilotic rather than to uh, uh, to them separately. So in summary, the uneven decimals, uh, uh, 30, 50, et cetera, are in the Toga built on 20 plus 10. This is presumably the Toga innovation. And hence, we can uh, argue for transfer into proto south nilotic rather than only proto kalenjin for those. Um, <clears throat> the decimals are clearly Cushitic. Uh, that's what we can see from the fact that they have these frozen forms or um, uh, from 3 plus 10 for 30, et cetera. And uh, while the innovations in, in some Cushitic languages, they have the reverse order of the tens followed by the number of tens. We are stuck with the, a bit the uh, uh, social, uh, social linguistic scenario. Of course, it's not so strange to borrow numbers. It's something that, that we see all over the world, but um, we don't see yet a uh, concrete scenario of a contact between proto-south nilotic and uh, and uh, uh, proto-omutana or east omutana uh, that would uh, explain why exactly those numbers and so many of them are transferred so we hope for some input from you uh, is there any other evidence for uh, early uh, transfer uh, from early early stages of Cushitic to Nilotic. Yes, we have some of them um, um, in addition to the numbers, not many, just a few. For example, rope to rain, uh, but we have discussed that already, that that could be also from, from higher up as it is, can be reconstructed for Proto-East Cushitic as a rope. Sometimes the direction is unclear, uh, or we suggest that it is the other direction. Mm. Uh, for example, with the proto bus, which gave the name to the article, mm. the the the, Kush, the Datoga word is bus, lake or sea. Uh, the proto nilotic is bus, lake, white river. So far, we have no evidence for this route in Kalenjin. But actually, it must have existed in Kalenjin if it can indeed be reconstructed up to proto nilotic level. And, um, and, and then it would be not that much. I remember now I've given this as an example of other direction, but it's maybe more an example of uh, uh, a deeper time depth. Of the of the transfer, sorry for that. Um, if we look at uh, cannot be more shallow because if we look at the closest uh, formal correspondence uh, with uh, with uh, the toga bass or nilotic bass, then that would be the uh, dasanech uh, word for uh, bass as the name for the for the Lake Parkana. We uh, uh, checked uh, if, if maybe there would be um, a 
cases like this that the word exists in in Kalenjin languages, but not as a word for uh, for lake, but as the name for a lake, but so far without any positive results. Um, the group of uh, of words that that uh, we accept that are very likely to be uh, transferred from East Omotana to Proto Kalenjin, or sometimes uh, another uh, language or language group in South Nilotic are these. Um, so uh, this would be the original uh, group of words that would constitute Proto Baz as the long word evidence for uh, for that uh, putative language. Um, Heine et al. They have they mentioned thirty seven of them. Um, well, we only some of them, very few of them, survive in in our uh, scrutiny of the uh, of the evidence. Uh, which is not to say that that we think they are wrong all the time, but uh, in several cases we would think that it is not necessarily uh, a transfer part of one and the same um, contact event transfer event. Mm. Yes, did I have any of them? Yeah. I have one of them. So the Subin is here as as one of them, and and that that is maybe still uh, from East Omotana to Kalenjin. Is to us a very interesting one. Um, the uh, the Proto East Omotana is reconstructed by them as uh, Sabin uh, with Ahmed Sosal uh, working here now on the reconstruction of Kushitic and specifically on the. Uh, East Omotana. Um, he has reassured us that he will have a story for the A rather than the U, because for the rest in East Africa, when we see this root in the meaning of the U, it is nearly always the U in the first uh, syllable. And it is all over. Um, Maasai has it, uh, and uh, Samburu, and, uh, and Gawara, and Yaku. It's also in a lot of Northeast Bantu languages. And uh, the problem that it is, is that it is restricted in Kushidic to just a few of them. And they are in many of them in different subgroups of East Kushidic. It's fairly restricted in Nilotic, it's uh, in Kalenjin. And then in Eastern Nilotic, it's in Masa and Samburu. Maybe it's in Turkana, but we don't know whether we can link this uh, this root in Turkana to that same etymon. The scenario that um, that we will uh, that that we've come up with is to uh, um, a transfer from Rendile into uh, an early form of Rendile into protocol engine, and if we can solve that uh, variation of the A and the U in Somali, then maybe. East Omotana into Kalenjin, but then from uh, Rendile also to Samburu, to Maasai, from Maasai to Chaga, from Maasai to Yaku. So a lot of uh, separate um, uh, transfer uh, F, um, events where Maasai played a role as uh, in, in uh, spreading this, uh, at this word. Um, Let's uh, let, let me skip the cast to see. We have to rethink that. Sunny lover, uh, it from which suggested goes from Proto Kalenjin to Somali because it's only in in uh, in Somali in, within Kushidic, and it would be strange. It is here as Proto Kalenjin to Somali, but actually Proto South Nilotic has been reconstructed by Rotland for the accepted male marriage candidate. Close enough to a lover. And uh, uh, time for the time, same time, it would be a little bit strange to propose a transfer from Somali to Proto South Nilotic. So uh, our option is to suggest that it is from Proto Kalenjin to Somali or the Kalenjin language to Somali. Uh, for some of the items, uh, um, we've 
we think that West Omotana is a better candidate than East Omotana. Actually, one of them was not highlighted by uh, Hein at all, but but uh, actually proposed. That was the AF that I mentioned before um, for the male the male bovine, where they give uh, Dasanetch uh, equivalence. Um, for the the malap the honey um the proto isquitic malap but then in datoga it's only mal arbore would be the only would be the only monosyllabic source in isquitic um but that is with a big question mark the other one tor to spear um then um, we have a rendile tor to spear why the is cushitic. Um, it uh, appears in Konso, in Yaku, in El Molo, also in Inambugu. The El Molo has uh, uh, the meaning harpoon, uh, which is not so strange given that they are fishermen. If Yaku, Yaku with Tor, if Yaku were the source, then um, then uh, if, if that is a, a, ref a reflection of proto Yaku Dulai, then it, it would be uh, the challenge that Dulai doesn't give any evidence for an early proto Yaku Dulai form Tor. Um, on cultural social grounds, uh, El Molo is not a not a very likely candidate to be the source uh, for Kalenjin because these these people are are not seen as uh, as dominant and they are fishermen. At least that's what they are now. Um, but if this route is a little bit further, uh, can be linked to a number of other languages in in East Kushidik, then we can assume that Proto West. Omotana must have had this item as well in the meaning spear. So we have several options here. It could be from Rendile or from Proto West Omotana or from Yaku to, well, most best options from Rendile or Proto West Omotana to uh, Kalenjin. Um, so uh, this buri that we mentioned before, where we now think, okay, maybe this is more a transfer into West Omotana, where only tested in West Omotana within uh, within Kushidik. Then this would then in the end bring us to uh, two plus one three, uh, some of the problematic suggestions of uh, contact between West Omotana and protocol engine and proto nilotic. We consider it too little to uh, to come up with a concrete contact scenario. For some of the items in Protobas, maybe the Yakudula connection would be better. Um, we mentioned them here. Uh, Tor, we have already discussed. Let us uh, discuss uh, the honey. Uh, it's an uh, interesting one. Complex, uh, the honey, the word for B in protocol engine is uh, linked in the, in the High Net All article to proto East Zagam for honey. Um, and then there's a lot of evidence for proto East Cushitic, then it is in a number of sub branches of proto East Cushitic. But we were struggling uh, for a long time with the link between honey and B. Admittedly, it's in the same semantic domain, but why, if you would, uh, why would protocol engine uh, uh, borrow the word for B and then use it in the meaning honey? We could not find any scenario of how they would do that. But um, we were talking to uh, Sarah Petrolino a few days ago, and, and she mentioned that that's exactly what the Hamar do in uh, in an attempt to avoid. So if that is attested in the area that uh, that was an avoidance strategy to, word, to use the word for the other, then, then maybe that can be accepted as uh, a link between the two items. 
and that is confirmed in the chat uh, by Yvonne and by Sam. So uh, we uh, we don't we no longer as as we uh, put it here in the slide we no longer uh, see ourselves hindered by the by the semantic distinction and uh, propose that probably Yaku or Kriyaku uh, is can be the source of this protocol engine given that. This proof for Miyako Sakmai is close to, closest in Sikkim. Uh, the So if that is an instance of uh, early Miyako uh, transfer to um, to Kalenjin, we have a very few of such possible cases for proto Yaku Dulai. Too few to propose a complex scenario. Oromo, Oromo eat, uh, where we think that that uh, the evidence uh, rather than East Omotana uh, points out uh, in the, to Oromo. I have added a column, uh, last column, Conso there, because we have the impression that these are maybe not proto Oromoid transfers, but transfers from specifically Oromo or maybe even more specifically. Uh, Borana, but this is uh, something that that we are still working on. It's just to indicate here that these ones, in our view, are uh, are not strong cases for East Omotana transfer, but stronger for Oromo transfer. So to sum up for this part, and uh, there's no evidence for a separate protobas uh, branch in our view. Um, some of the proposals are unlikely, uh, and and once you allow multiple sources, then you can also see multiple uh, transfers and um, with a, a, a different number of various sources. And a few of the in the area of pre proto eastern Matana to protocol engine remain where there were many. Uh, some things we have to do in the in the next steps. Um, I'm going to skip this because I'm watching my my I'm watching my watch, and there's still some thing that we want to uh, present, um, which is not in in the Heine uh, Rotland Fossen article. They don't discuss South Kushidik, but we were looking, of course, at Eretz reconstruction of South Kushidik, and there he has quite a number of uh, proposals for. South Cushitic loans in uh, proto Kalenjin and Kalenjin. We accept some of them, so that's what we have. We've gone through some of them and we found some more. Uh, and that is actually quite an impressive uh, set altogether. So um, in this table, uh, we have the ones that uh, Eret has proposed, and, and we've added the, the reconstruction that Roland and I did for proto West Drift. To, uh, as evidence, as extra evidence to support that we uh, that we accept uh, Eric's proposals for these ones. Um, I'm going to uh, discuss only one very complex uh, in the next slides, the hippo. <clears throat> We've added some more um, uh, that, uh, the, for example, Ararai to see or Arar to see from Proto West Rift R to see. Uh, Cham, protocol engine, Lieben, uh, to love, maybe from Kla to love, if it is from the, the derived verb in proto respect, Chlaam, as we have in Chlaamu, and if the, the Ch would be the protocol engine adaptation of Chle, so a few ifs there. Um, and then we have added a few more by going through the Pocot dictionary and, um, and, and, and finding correlates with Iraku and sometimes beyond Iraku. So Takres, Takres, to greet, to beam, to swim, for Tambo, to swim, Vag, dislike, Vag, fear, 
systematically not exactly the same, but and also different, but very uh, uh, comparable, maybe still the Kalambaitu to the Kalambas, the honey batch and the artfak, the mole and the artfak when in Kopot is a derivation for the from the verb to scrape. Uh, Proto Irakusoi and Pokotsuye, dog and wild dog, tip to fill a hole and to bury a cover in the ground. So uh, in the end, uh, do I have I want this question, so maybe, maybe let me just read out the scenario that we have for Maka, which is a puzzle, a real puzzle. Proto Westworld has Maka for a beast animal, quite general word, and uh, borrowed in, in book with to mean just thing, actually. But it also has uh, um, a, a word, uh, Mahu, for the hippo two different words that are a bit similar. Uh, but uh, protocol engine has something like maca for the hippo. Maca for the hippo. Um, then um, the scenario, which is, I mean, a lot of iffies, but what, what, we, what we could see is maybe that we combine uh, the two links of the, the proto oromoid maka in the meaning of snake to the makai uh, hippo in Kalenjin, uh, assuming that it was first transferred in the meaning snake, but then later changed in meaning from snake to hippo possibly under the influence of contact with South Cushitic, where there was confusion of for those Kalenjin speakers between Maka and Maha, um, and not distinguishing uh, those two forms. Um, yeah, uh, fish and snake, um, uh, do, uh, sorry, not fish and, fish and snake is all, all often uh, connected in East Africa, but hippo and, sn and snake, maybe uh, through the, the, the similarity in, uh, in both being uh, an animals in the water and maybe also properties of the skin. Um, yes, let me leave it at this. Um, and Then think a little bit about this largest set, 21 of, um, of links in between South Cushitic. And South Cushitic is really for us just uh, Proto West Rift and uh, Proto Kalenjin. Uh, sometimes Proto Kalenjin, sometimes we can only show it for Pokot, but maybe with further work that can be, uh, that can be taken up to Proto Kalenjin. They are in the in the semantic fields of uh, the environment with animals, subsist subsistence, some utensils. And uh, this suggests was South Kaukushitic in Kenya before they entered Tanzania. Well, obviously they were, uh, they came from Ethiopia, but at the same time as Proto Kalenjin, and maybe even a bit later as well. That is for us the surprising uh, conclusion uh, from this uh, set of transfers. And if we add to that the um, the result that um, that is getting more and more support that we should Ronald and I suggested in our reconstruction of Proto West Rift, that there was pre Oromo influence on Proto West Rift. Um, Ahmed says, sees that in the um, confirmation of that in, in the uh, number of suffixes, and uh, Christian has recently also found a number of extra. Uh, lexical evidence of pre Oromo, early Oromo influence on Proto West Rift. When we discuss the Taita Cushitic uh, links, then sometimes this was not many times, but sometimes the Cushitic link to the Bait Taita Bantu uh, words was uh, specifically South Cushitic. All of these things. Um, point to a place of South Cushitic in Kenya and up to the moment that they uh, were as proto West Rift into contact with 
uh, early Oromo expansion. So um, that would uh, make, uh, that has a number of, of repercussions. That would be much later than many of us have uh, assumed so far. Um, as a repercussions are then also that if we find Cushitic loans in Bantu in Tanzania, then we cannot link those to uh, to uh, proto Cushitic or proto Vestric Cushitic unless uh, they are late or unless the contact that with Bantu happened early in Kenya. Um, also, these dates for the, um, the this, these suggestions of an uh, equation of savanna pastoral and Neolithic with Cushitic in the case of Tanzania, that is difficult to maintain. And for example, uh, Luhmanda, uh, the archaeological site has been dated to 3000 before present um, and has also been suggested to be savanna pastoral Neolithic. But then that cannot have been uh, a site of Cushitic speakers. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. We can now begin the question and answer section. Um, I didn't get this. Uh... I th but... yeah, I think that Martha was asking. Sorry, Martha, your your connection's a little bit a little bit slow. But I caught. I think I caught what you were saying. I, I think that Martha and catch me if I'm wrong here. Maybe in the chat, Martha. Um, I think uh, Martha was asking. She saw on one of the slides with hippo that one of the related words was girl or girls. Oh, I've heard, I've heard your thoughts on this, so that's why it jumped out to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a strange thing, yes. So um, I remember I remember yes, you saying that yes, there was, yes. there was... Let, let me say, okay, it's it's not important for our story on on the Maha and the Maka. Um, uh, it's just that we have a number of the different roots in proto west Rift. We have Maho for Hippo and we have the Hawewe U for Hippo. And, and the Hawewe U for Hippo, we suggest, is a loan for Kisamjanga Datoga, where they have the word for Hawega, with the kind of suffix for daughters, girls. And then Marta thought, well, how do you go from, uh, from uh, daughters and girls to Hippo? And it it does uh, occur in in songs in the, in the Kisam Janga Datoga, where they they use um, um, the um, they use the word uh, they use this in songs. Which way did they use it? Uh, Martin, I'll, uh, if I could chime in, give yeah. you the time to look it up. Uh, interestingly, among the Jumtlasi of a uh, Namibian Botswana, there's a uh, a, 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 an entity in folklore, Lundima, who is the beautiful aardvark maiden, and she transforms between python, elephant, aardvark, always lovely, sleek, uh, full. So, you know, it is possible for these uh, entities, these creatures, to all be connected in a folklore sort of way. Of course, this is a different cultural area. But I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Bonnie. And so, also in the in the Datoga folklore, there is this equation of hippo and uh, and daughters, uh, girls, uh, which is why we think it's not completely idiotic to to suggest that uh, Iraku Gorwa took this from Datoga. But it does have nothing to do with the Maka and the Maha in a way. It's just to uh, just to argue that there was an innovation in Iraku Gorwa and that Alakwa Borongo Mahu Hippo um, uh, is possibly also a reflection of the proto Westrift Mah Mahu for Hippo. That was the why we added that. Thank you. I was just curious about that. I yes. realized it wasn't essential to your story. Uh, yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, so um, I, I'd like to go back to the very beginning um, because I didn't really understand what motivated Heine et al. to postulate uh, this separate 
um, proto language, uh, proto buzz with apparently no modern daughter languages, if I understand correctly. So, uh, um, yeah, so maybe you could just uh, clarify how he, how, yeah. how, the, how, how this happened. Yes. Um, well, speculation, uh, looking uh, into their minds and into the time uh, and the, and the, the fashions uh, of that time. Um, <clears throat> So uh, these three authors, uh, of course, they were all three in Cologne, and uh, Heine had worked on the reconstruction of uh, Somali and its uh, related languages, um, and and Rainer Fossen and, and uh, Franz Hoppens were working on on Nilotic. Um, Eric had then in what was it seven nineteen seventy uh, published his or done his uh, PhD dissertation on the reconstruction of uh, South Nilotic with proposing a lot of scenarios of, of contact. Um, and actually also, yeah, having a table with uh, cognates between uh, the proto, the Somali group, Proto-East Omotama and the uh, proto kalenjin he didn't give it, he didn't claim that, yeah, I think he dis, does claim that this is one uh, um, contact event, but he didn't give a name to the language uh, as he does. Uh, I think he learned that from Hein afterwards, he would always give a name like uh, Rope or Sog or whatever to any of these putative languages. Um, Heine, uh, Rotland and Vossen, they, they don't, say too much about uh, uh, Eric's uh, proposals. They, they mostly occur in the footnotes, um, but it was, uh, it, had, it happened in that time in several cases that, okay, um, if we have such a set of loanwords and Eric and, uh, and uh, Nurse had just done it for Taita huh? to say, okay, there are two Cushitic languages in the Taita Hills on the basis of Taita loans in in Bantu uh, languages, um, they don't discuss what we discuss. Like they they not not at length. Uh, they just say uh, what the vowel inventor in the consonant inventory is of this proto bars, and then that must have been different in those two places where they think well. Well, we think that that is not 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 strong evidence that it must have really be be different, but I think there was a want to bring all those uh, all those Cushitic loans in Nilotic together to to come to such a historical proposal. I mean, that was very much on vogue at the time to come up with historical proposals. Uh, home, what is the homeland on the basis of the kind of flora and fauna that you can reconstruct for? Uh, East Omotana, that's also something that Heine did at that time. So I think there was really a want to um, to make this one. And um, yeah, we uh, um, if we are not convinced by that it has to be separate, then then also you're not you're not really forced to assume that it must be <laughs> one. And then yeah. you look at it differently and you get a different scenario. Mm -hmm. That, that yeah. is what I can say about it. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. I, I just have a very small comment on your spear, uh, uh, on the word for spear. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this tor, um, tor as a root is also um, widely used in Ometo for spear. And it's interesting, usually Ometo has borrowed from Highland Iskushedik, but that's not something that you find up there. So, I mean, it doesn't probably oh. doesn't concern you, but it just struck it me. It does. Okay, no, it does. does. Okay, so it just struck me that the word for spear, tor, is 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 attested in in actually I mean quite a number of uh, Umeto languages and uh, they can't have taken it from Highland East Cushitic where they usually took their Cushitic loans from. Yeah. I mean, if you look into um, uh, Lamberti's uh, Wolaita book, there he has this uh, um, comparative word list, and the end there, there you see, for instance, in Basque uh, the word for spear is Tora, so it's and you find yep. that in other languages as well. 
Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yvonne. No, um, it, it does concern us. We didn't look into omotic at Ometo or South Omotic. And um, yeah, uh, it's, it, it's in a way there's no reason for that. Uh, it, it's just sometimes you're happy that uh, the emancipation of Omotic has resulted in being them a separate branch so that you can forget about them. But um, a practical reason is that we still want to look into Omotic um, because um, in our project, we are planning on um, uh, Ethiopian PhD student to to work on reconstruction of those specifically South Omotic. But the whole uh, Omotic is in the area. Uh, Ometo is not far, and um, yeah, so we should take this into account. Thank you, Michael. Yes, um, thank you, uh, Martin, for an interesting talk. So I, I'm just curious. Uh, on the, the list of words that uh, actually um, are present in Masai as well. And um, it's interesting to uh, see how they spill over to Eastern, I mean, these uh, cognates or borrowings spill over to Eastern Ilotic. Because when I look at these words, for example, awesome for 30 is in Masai, just to mention randomly without, without referring to specific slides. Mm. of your presentation. Um, mm. Tormon is there as well, mm -hmm. but uh, I find that uh, Digdam, I think this was, uh, was it uh, Kalenjin or Datoga? We also have Tikitam, so it's T instead of D, so this kind of voicing going on there. Yeah. And uh, interesting semantic change um, um, on the same cognate. So we have bus um, as lake uh, yeah. on, on your slides, but in Maasai, we had the prefix olvas to mean a lot of water or some I mean, watery, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a liquid and, and this, you expect a lot of milk and then you just to find a lot of water in it. So we say olvas. Um, okay. And nuk for sak and yeah. in Maasai, we have nak. So you know, the other side is nuk. Here we have nak. So is a uh, change of vowel and of course voicing and the final consonant. Um, you have mentioned Suvain um, yeah. and um, interesting semantics as well. We have Kalambas for honey burger, but in Maasai, the word means aggressive, being aggressive, maybe uh, related to what the honey burger does. So yeah, <laughs> just wanted to let you know about what do I find in just on, on uh, quick observation of the data. Thank you, Michael. And um, uh, I knew some of them, but <laughs> half of them are new to me. So thank you. Um, and and um, we we didn't and uh, take that much into the discussion. I mean, it Eret also uh, does have proposals of South neurotic influence on Maasai. And, and and we didn't go into uh, a study of those uh, in detail. Um, just uh, we still have to do that, and 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 we want to concentrate on on that higher level contact. Uh, so, um, but we can, and we have to check then whether it's specifically Maasai, because some of them seem to be specifically Maasai. And then, with the enormous spread of Maasai uh, in East Africa, then it can go to. Uh, water areas as well yeah and then you always get kuliak as well yeah 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 thank you sam yeah Mark. i was just going to say there have been a number of things about the bee and honey connection including different words from different languages i won't read them all out yeah. Yeah. This uh, this polysemy between bee and uh, and honey. Yeah. You mm. know, and when we in the beginning we said, okay, okay, bee honey, and uh, then then we thought of yeah, but but how do you actually do that? So uh, it is you can see that it happens, but we also want to understand how it can happen. And, and this avoidance in, in Hama that for us was the first example. We had other scenarios where we would, we would think, okay, you have 
different compounds for different kinds of bee and one of them honey bee and then lose one part of the com uh, compound things like that um but um the uh, um the thing is that uh, i think we you need to to understand what what links the two and uh, and and this is now uh, the avoidance is now one of them I see that Yvonne has uh, has noted yeah. that in the reflex database there are 184 sources where the same word is used for bee and honey, and we get a link. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you, Yvonne. We will never have any doubt anymore. Um, Martin, uh, you had jumped over sort of the the next steps for the project. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm wondering. I'm curious as to like what what are what's in your mind in terms of like what needs to be done immediately next sort of in response to this um well um i think um i think we want to to look at two, two things one is uh strictly sort of proto bass the, the the contact between uh south nilotic and the east cushitic languages um for that uh, so we have to polish it up because, I mean, the presentation came a bit early. We have to polish it up. And one challenge there is, is the reconstruction of Proto-Datoga. Uh, Rotland did an excellent work, but it's frustrating that he has a proto engine, And then on the other, the other side, he doesn't have Proto-Datoga. He has common Datoga. And and he he suggests forms for common datoga, but uh, it's difficult for us to know uh, why is that not proto datoga and uh, and how did he come to the common datoga forms? Um, so apparently it's 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 not an easy thing to reconstruct uh, proto datoga, um, but it's a it's a, a a difference that we have sort of. Uh, Ignore to some extent uh, in the whole presentation. The common Datoga ones are not reconstructions, and you would want to be them reconstructions. That is that is one thing. Um, the other thing is is yeah, uh, Yvonne brought up uh, Ometo, and then more in general, uh, uh, Omotic. Uh, if you if if you look at the area where this contact apparently uh, must have taken place, then it is important to look at um, at Ometo and South Omotic uh, possible links. That was the other uh, next thing that we want to uh, that we plan to do in the project. Um, maybe we'll want to uh, discuss the South Nilotic Protocol Engine links in a separate article because there we have the feeling that we have to go a bit further in so what what does the linguistic scenario what does it entail for the historical scenario and and the challenge there is to to come up with a an area of where this contact must have taken place because on the one hand we see south cushitic and and the taita hills but then uh, when you think of what is the the homeland of the protocol engine I don't know, but then I ask, and then people say, uh, Uganda, Kenyan border. Well, that is very far from the from the Taita Hills. So uh, it's a challenge to uh, to come up with a proposal of, of where this contact uh, must have happened. We have to polish that up too, because where we have only Pokot as a link to, uh, to only Iraq, we have to see, we have to, Get it up higher to Proto West Rift and to Proto Kalenjin, uh, or uh, we we end up with a scenario where Proto South Kushitic Proto West Rift was in Kenya so long that uh, it could still influence uh, Pokot when it already had split off from the rest of Kalenjin. Bonnie adds in relation to that in the chat there, we need to consider that some Kalenjin words may be from hunter-gatherer substrate languages. 
So sort of in the same vein as her and Mauro's uh, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, yeah. Thank you. I think those are all of the questions and comments for today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to them for their presentation and everyone else are on Wednesday, the 12th of July by Michael Karani. Oh,